Well, we can cross now to Washington, D.C. to talk to Mark Weisbrot. He's a co-director at the Center for Economic and Policy Research and an expert on the politics and economy of Venezuela. Thank you for joining us uh, this evening, Mr. Weisbrot. Um, there Thank has you. been international condemnation and there's been direct reaction as well. We're starting to see um, the first signs of sanctions against Venezuela, Mr. Maduro. Yes, and I think this is a huge mistake. I think sanctions from the United States will only further polarize the situation. Uh, and it's a terrible, you know, and, and the problem is the U.S. has this strategy of regime change like it had in Iraq and Syria and uh, Afghanistan and Libya. And this really leads, it's led to disaster everywhere else. And if they keep going in this direction, it will, it could push, help push the country into civil war. It's a polarized country. And what they really need is negotiations like they had uh, in the fall of last year and something that leads to uh, elections, of course, as the president, actually as President Maduro has promised to have the regularly scheduled presidential elections. And that's what they need. And instead, the U.S. has got its allies, not the whole world. It's everybody who's allied with the U.S., which, of course, includes Europe and U.S. allies in, in Latin America who are on board with the regime change uh, strategy, those are the ones that support uh, what the United States, what the Trump administration is doing. Well, and well, the sanctions are already taking effect. They're already having an enormous negative impact. The black market value of the currency crashed by over 40%. It's the fastest I've ever seen it fall in, in 15 years. And in fact, some of the sanctions on the individuals are going to deprive the government of most of it could uh, deprive of most of its foreign exchange earnings. For example, uh, one of the officials of uh, PDVSA, the national oil company, is under sanctions because of that uh, they can't sign contracts. So this is already a, a serious attempt to destroy the economy and to overthrow the government. And the Secretary of State Tillerson said it. I mean, he said we're trying to force Maduro to resign. We're trying to look at policy options that will make uh, will get rid of this government. This well, is, is something is that Maduro the rest of the good for Venezuela? I mean, how does the current Venezuela differ to the vision that Hugo Chavez had? Well, I don't think that's the point. I mean, we're not talking about, you know, that's why they have election. They have a presidential election for next year. People can vote Maduro out of office if they want to do so. It's like they voted him in. The, the, the point that the, the vast majority of the 7 billion people on the planet would agree with is that uh, a foreign government doesn't have the right to overthrow the elected government of another country. That's what most people believe in. But well, on, again, on, the United let me States just jump is in here because on your Trump point about voting him out, um, there has been um, suggestions that there was very wide electoral fraud um, in this election. Were there observers on the ground in Venezuela at the time of the election on Sunday? There were there were some observers. Uh, you know, that's well. First of all, I don't know that you can really call it fraud if they inflated the turnout. I mean, this wasn't a competitive election between the government and the opposition. The opposition didn't participate. So if they did do that, I think it's terrible for their credibility. I'm not sure that they did, though. They've now posted all the... The, the numbers for the individual races, and they do seem to add up uh, to about what the government claimed. So, and it would be very hard to fix that. So we don't really know uh, what the totals are, but even if it did happen, uh, that's not the same thing as stealing election uh, from your rival power. It's not to justify it at all. If the, I, again, it would be terrible if those numbers were inflated. But it's not. It, it doesn't affect uh, relations between the government and the and the opposition. So, I, you know, I'm not defending what the government is doing. I, I wasn't in favor of this uh, assembly either. Uh, uh, so, it, the the point is that uh, we need calmer voices. We need people who are calling for actual dialogue and negotiation. There are people within the opposition who favor that, but they're not in the ascendancy right now. Right now, it's the hardliners, the ones who want regime change by any means necessary. Okay. And Lopez himself, by the way, uh, he was arrested because he called on a video for the military to rebel uh, and to stop providing security okay, for the Okay, Mark, we're going to have to leave it there. Mark Vosbright, uh, co-director at the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you.